Hi there. So today we're going to be talking about FDP. And when I say FDP, what I mean is um, it's just a tool that we use to remember how to change fractions, decimals, and percents. Um, you should know already that there's a, a relationship between fractions, decimals, and percents. So they're all just a different way of representing the same, um, the same ratio. All right, so the F and FDP stands for fraction. The D is going to stand for decimal. And the P is going to stand for percent. And just as a reminder, percent means like out of 100. So sometimes that's useful to remember as well. All right, so this is just a, a tool, and you'll see it in class. Um, but this is just something we use, again, to remember what to do when we need to change from one to the other. So if I'm going from a fraction to a decimal this way, then I want to use um, also another tool we use called TIBA, which stands for top and bottom out, <clears throat> that basically I'm just dividing, all right? And if I'm going from a decimal to a percent, then I move my decimal two places. I need to go the other direction. If I want to start with a percent and change it to a decimal, then I'm also going to move two places, but this time I'm going to move towards the D. So when I'm going decimal to percent, I'm moving to the right two places. When I'm going percent to decimal, I'm moving to the left two places. And then when I need to go from a decimal to a fraction, I'm going to write the fraction like I say the decimal. And so we say, write it like you say it. Okay, I'm going to explain some more about what this means as we do some examples. All right, so to go from a fraction to a decimal. So if I want to go fraction to decimal, then when I'm following my chart, I'm going to go from fraction to D, or from F to D. So the way to do that, this is reminding me to divide using top in, bottom out. So tie bow, top in, bottom out. Top and bottom out. Okay, and so if I look at a fraction like this, 7 over 20, the top number is 7, so that goes inside my little house. 20 is out, so the bottom goes out. That's how you use that part. All right, I can't divide 20. I cannot divide 20 into 7. I can put an X or a 0 there. I can just leave it blank, but the, it's nice to put something there so you don't lose track of what you're doing. And then I'm going to add a decimal. When I add a decimal, and my um, dividend, then I also need to add it to my quotient. Then I'm going to add a zero also, so now I'm dividing 20 into 70. 20 will go into 70 three times. When I multiply, I'm going to get 60. When I subtract, I'm going to get 10. I'm going to add another zero so that I can keep going. So 20 will go into 100 five times. Five times 20 is 100, and so I'm done. All right, so to change 7, 20, it's the 20th into a decimal, and it would be 0.35 or 0 0.35. All right, so 720, you can change it to 0 0.35. Okay? Um, now, when you're changing fractions to decimals, um, sometimes this decimal will keep on going, and so often kids ask how how long do we want you to, to, to do that for, and we're just asking you to go three decimal places. So just remember that. You can always stop after you get to that third decimal place. Okay? Um, all right, so now we're going decimal to percent. So this is when I want to use the D to the P part. So since I'm going this direction, decimal to percent, I'm going to move my decimal two places. All right, so if I start with the decimal, and um, we'll just use the one we had, at 0.35, and I move it two places to the right, one, two, and the decimal's behind the five now, so this would be 35%. If I want to go fraction to percent, I need to go F to P. Notice I have to go through the D in order to get there. So first I need to go fraction to decimal, then I can go decimal to percent. All right, so again, let's start with an example, 2 over 5. <clears throat> to get from fraction to decimal, I want to use tie bow. So the top number goes inside, so T go, or 2 goes in for T, and then the bottom number goes outside, so the 5 would go out. I can't divide 5 into 2, so I'm going to add a decimal and move it up, and I'm going to add a 0. So 5 will go into 24 times, 
and then that would be my decimal. So I'm gonna get the decimal 0.4, and then I'm gonna change um, D to P. So I'm gonna need to move the two, uh, the decimal two places, and I'm again, since I'm going D to P, I'm moving it to the right two places. So in this case, I can only move it one place before um, I run out of, of numbers, and so I'm gonna add a zero here. And so that becomes 40%. Because I always, it doesn't matter how many numbers there are. Sometimes you have extra numbers and there's a decimal in the percent. And um, But you always move the decimal two places to change it to a percent. All right? All right. If I'm going decimal to fraction, all right, so this time I'm going decimal to fraction. So if I'm looking at my little tool up here, the decimal's here and the fraction's here. So this time I'm going decimal to fraction. It says write it like you say it. I'm going to write it like I say it. So uh, what would that, would that mean? If I have a number, a lot of times I say that's 0.8, but if I say it with place value, then I would say that this is 8 tenths, right? 8 is in the tenths place. So if I write that as a fraction, 8 tenths, I'm writing 8 over 10, all right? Um, I never want to leave a decimal, um, I'm sorry, a fraction that's not simplified, so I want to look at this and see if it can be simplified. This one has um, a common factor of two, so I'm gonna divide it by two, and this would give me four over five, which is simplified, so 0.8 I can change into the fraction four-fifths, all right? Um, again, if you have a decimal like this, 0 0.08 is how sometimes I would say it, but if I say it with the right place value, eight is in the hundredths place, so I would write it as eight one-hundredths, all right? Again, I'm looking to see if it can be simplified, this time they have a common factor of four. So if I divide eight by four, I get two. If I divide 100 by four, I get 25. And that's simplified, so I would leave it. All right, and you can do this for any decimal, um, even if you have like a mixed number. So in this case, if I have 2.013, the two is gonna be my whole number. So this is two and 13 what? The three is in the thousands, it's tens, hundreds, thousands. So 13 thousandths, so this would be two and 13 thousandths. That cannot be simplified, so that would be my final mixed number or fraction. All right, percent to decimal. If I start with the percent, 42%, this time, all right, if I'm looking at my chart, I'm going percent to decimal. So this time I'm moving this direction, which I'm still moving my decimal up here two places. Okay, but this time I'm moving towards the D, so I'm moving to the left. Well, if I look at the number 42%, where's the decimal? If you don't see a decimal, it's just a whole number, then where is that? Think about the decimal like a period. Where does the period always go at the end of the sentence? It always goes at the, sorry, it always goes at the end, right? I just said it. So the period, if this were a if sentence, 42 was a sentence, where would the period go? It would go at the end of the two right there. All right, so if I move it now two places to the left, it's going to end up in front of the 4, so this would be 0.42. And then just like this, um, the first one we did that involved percent, okay, you always move it two places. So if I start with like a larger number, let's say I have 512%, um, okay, again, my decimal is always going to be at the end when I don't see it. I'm still going to move it two places, but this time there's a whole number, 5.12. Okay, all right, percent to fraction. Let's say I'm starting with the percent 12%, and I'm gonna change it to a fraction. This time it's gonna take all three to get there. I'm starting with the percent, I'm moving through the decimal before I can get to the fraction. All right, so to go from a percent to a decimal, I just that, did that. I need to move it two places. So again, it's at the end of my sentence or the end of my number. I'm gonna move it two places, and it becomes 0.12. To go from a decimal to a fraction, decimal to fraction, I'm going to write it like I say it. So instead of saying 0.12, I'm going to say it with place value 12 what? The 2 is in the hundredths place, so 12 one hundredths. All right, that can be simplified, so I want to make sure I go ahead and do that. These are both divisible by 4 again. That would be 3 and 3 25ths. Okay. Um, Again, if I start it off, and sometimes there, there is a decimal in the percent, let's say like 2.3%. And if I wanna move it two places this way, and because I'm going percent to decimal, I'm always moving the decimal to the left. This time I would move it two places and need to add a zero here because I always have to move it two places. 
so it becomes this number 0 0.023. To change this number into a decimal, I mean, sorry, into a fraction, I'm still gonna say it with place value. This would be 23, what? Is tens, hundreds, thousands. So this is 23 over 1,000. And that can't be simplified. So then my final answer would be 23 one thousandths. Okay? All right. So let's just try um, a few more examples. We're changing right here. We're changing 7 ninths into a percent. Um, so this is a fraction. I think of FDP. I'm a fraction, and I need to change it to percent. So I'm going fraction to decimal, and then decimal to percent. So to go from fraction to decimal, you can follow your example. You can look at the little anchor chart here. I need to do typo or divide or um, top in, bottom out, however you want to remember it. Right, so the top number goes in, the bottom number goes out. I can't divide 9 into 7, so I'm going to add my decimal both places, add my 0. 9 will go into 70, um, 7 times. 7 times 9 is 63. When I subtract, I'm going to get 7. Okay, if I bring down another 0, 9 will go into 70, um, 7 times. All right, so this is going to be, I'm getting the same remainder each time. So this number is repeating, the 0.77. All right, so one way to express that is to say that this is 0 0.7. If you put the line over the 7, that means that the 7 is repeating. All right, I still want to change it to a percent, though. So how do you change a repeating decimal to a percent? Well, from here, if I try to move it over two places, because that's how I get from D to P, and moving it to the right two places. Now, a lot of times people want to put a zero there. That's not really what's happening. If I continue to write, what does this line mean? It means a seven's repeating. So it's not going to be a zero that goes here. It's going to be a seven that goes here. And then I want to show that it's repeating. So I'm going to put another seven here um, to show that it's repeating. So this ends up being 77.7 .7 repeating percent. Okay? So again, what did we do? We changed a um, 7 ninths, top and bottom out. We changed that to a decimal and got 0.7 repeating. Then we had to move it two places. All right. In order to do that, we had to add a number here. The reason we added a 7 is because it repeats the 7, not a 0. Okay? All right. If I want to change 45% into a fraction, okay, think about the tool, FDP. Um, starting with the percent this time, I've got to change it to a decimal, and then I've got to change the decimal to a fraction. All right, so do the first part, percent to decimal. I'm moving my decimal two places. It's at the end of my number, end of my sentence. I'm going to move it two places this direction towards the D. So it becomes 0.45. Okay, to change it to a fraction, I want to write it, write it like I say it. So 45 tens, hundredths. And then check to see if you can simplify it. These are both divisible by 5. So this becomes 9 over 20. 9 twenties. All right. And then the last one, change 250% into a fraction. So again, I'm starting with a percent and making it into a fraction. So you think of it, we got to write it in this order. I'm starting here at the percent. To make it a fraction, I've got to go through the D. So I'm going, I'm going to follow these arrows in order to get there. All right, so change a percent to a decimal. I move it two places towards the D, so towards the left, so 250%. Again, my decimal's in the back of my sentence, back of my number, I always move it two places, so I'm moving two places to the left. Um, so now I have 2.5, I can drop the zero after I move um, my decimal. And then I wanna make that into a fraction, all right? so. How do you make a number that has a whole number into a fraction? Well, the two um, is the whole number in your it's the whole number in your decimal, so it's the whole number in your fraction as well. So this is two, and then I'm gonna just how would I say the 0 0.5? This is in the tenths place, so two and five tenths. I'm gonna write two and five tenths like that. All right, again, check to see if you can simplify it. You can, these are both divisible by five. All right, so I'm going to keep the 2 from um, the beginning, and then 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and that can't be simplified anymore, so this is 2 and 1 half. All right, so FDP, a tool that we use to change fractions to decimals and decimals to percent, and then go the other way, percents to decimals and percents and decimals to um, fractions. All right, see you soon.